are at least eight different types of RVs and pros and cons to each one plus a lot of innovative ideas that you may have never even thought of. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And before we bought our RV, we watched a lot of YouTube videos, took lots of notes, and we decided Oh, a Class C is definitely for us, but God had other plans, and things didn't work out to get a Class C, and we ended up with a truck and a fifth wheel. Now, if Class C and fifth wheel are confusing to you, wait till we get to the rest of them, and we're going to try and clear through all of them today and give you the pros and cons of each style. First, we're going to talk about towables which means you're going to have to have a suitable pickup truck of the right size or uh, the right size van. And if you get some smaller ones, you could even pull it with a car. So the first one we're going to talk about are travel trailers. Travel trailers, some are so small that all they really have in them is just a little bed. And um, they, you might have to carry like a cooler or something like that along with you. They're more or less just a really nice way to sleep sleep <laughs> in like a tent type situation or a camping situation, uh, but without having to set up a tent. That's basically all they are. They're very tiny. But then they go all the way up to the largest one is the Jayco. I have to read this. Jayco Eagle. 334 D R O K <laughs> and that is 41 feet 2 inches long. Currently it is the longest travel trailer around. Travel trailers have a hitch on the front and then you back up your truck or van or whatever and then they you have the it's called a receiver hitch on the truck and the and the hitch on the trailer rests on top of that hitch with the ball pin on that hitch and then you just uh, hook up all the stabilizer stuff to keep it from swaying or bouncing too much or getting the weight off and then you go happily down the road <laughs> <laughs> now there are some pros and cons of course uh, one of them is that unless you have a backup camera on the back of your truck or van you kind of almost really need to have another person kind of guiding you in when you're backing up to um, to hook up the the travel trailer to the truck because you can't see it by just looking in, a, in the rear view mirror. One of the advantages of being in a travel trailer is that it's all on one level. So there's no stairs except the few that it takes to get into it. Otherwise, everything else is on one level. The other side of that is on outside of the trailer, uh, clearance overhead on a travel trailer is much lower than it would be for a fifth wheel. That's true, which is what we're going to talk about next. <laughs> fifth wheels, and that's what Gary and I have. Ours is only a 26 foot. We don't have any bump outs or slide outs on ours. Um, so it's just the eight feet wide, not even eight feet wide, really. I think we figured out once that we live in 180 square feet. So it's quite small, but it's everything we need. Um, some can be just monsters. I mean, they're just huge and so tall, and they have tons of storage space underneath and it, throughout the, the fifth wheel. But one of the advantages to a fifth wheel is that you tend to have more separated space um, our bathroom and bedroom are up a few stairs away from the rest of the RV or the rest of the living area. So we have that little bit of separation there mm -hmm. and uh, we do like that a lot. Because sometimes we just need to be separated. <laughs> I can go to my end, she can go her end. And... <laughs> Especially when we're both on the phone at the same time, it's yeah. really handy. <laughs> yeah. There's a difference also in the hitch with a fifth wheel. The truck hitch is in the bed of the truck, 
and the uh, hitch is uh, on the trailer is, is of course right at the very uh, front part of the trailer that rests in the hitch on the truck. So it's a lot easier, it's a lot higher, and I can be doing things inside and putting things down, getting things ready to move, and Gary doesn't even need me to direct him at all. He just looks mm. in the rear view mirror and he can see everything. It so. hooks up much easier, and it disconnects much easier, and it handles a lot better going down the road, uh, turning tight corners, backing into tight spots, fifth wheel is the big plus. Okay. Now, just because we own a fifth wheel, I just have to show you the one we saw yesterday. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> it was way more than what we would want, but the colors in there were so much prettier. It's been a while since we've done a tour of any RVs and, um, boy, they were so dark for so many years. Everything was dark, dark, dark. <laughs> And this one was really a surprise. So enjoy this little clip here. by the look on Orlean's face that it was surprising, but not on our list. No. <laughs> Next on the list of towables are pop-ups, high lows, and A-frames. Now, the dealership we went to yesterday, in fact, there were three dealerships we went to, and only one of them let us film. <laughs> So big shout out to Ron Hoover RV of Katy, Texas. And uh, we've dealt with Ron Hoover before, and we really like the people there. And it's at a different location even. So anyway, little shout out to them. Uh, but anyway, the towables, none of the RV dealerships in the area we went to had a high-low or an A-frame. But the basic concept of a pop-up type thing is that it's all kind of folded in for travel which makes it very low profile so you don't have as many issues with high winds and things like that and then when you get to your destination you can open them up an a-frame obviously looks like this and the pop-ups have beds that go out and the roof goes up and a high-low is kind of already hard shelled, but it fits into each other to, for travel. So then all you have to do is just raise it up and the whole thing is a hard shell. But those are the different kinds of pop-ups. We saw a couple yesterday that were really different. One is called a cricket. So one of the disadvantages to having a pop-up 
unless it's the high low where you really don't have a lot of setup all you have to do is press a button i think and it just goes up but with a pop-up with the canvas kind of sides or the a-frame there are some things you probably have to do outside so if it's raining and you arrive at your destination you're going to either have to wait in your vehicle or something because hmm. or do it in the rain um, another disadvantage is that as you're traveling you can't use the bathroom you can't use the kitchen you can't use any of those things while you're traveling because you'd have to open it all up to get to it another disadvantage to a pop-up especially the kind the, the traditional kind where everything is fits down into a box and the cover comes down is that if it's raining the day you leave the canvas is going to be damp and when you get home you're going to have to open it all up and air it out or it's going to get musty smelling um, and canvas over the years canvas will probably have to be replaced but that's maintenance and every RV has maintenance next on the list of towables are uh, toy haulers these are really a, a, a very versatile um, maybe using them in ways you haven't thought of um, toy haulers can be on a fifth wheel or a travel trailer you can buy them both ways but the the thing they have in common is that the back end folds down it's a big door on the whole back and it folds down or opens out uh, depending on the style and then you have this open area where you can put your ATVs, your kayaks, your uh, bicycles, your uh, motorbikes, like dirt bikes and things like that. So if you ever go past uh, uh, on a weekend, on uh, past any of those places where they do the dirt bike races, everybody has a toy hauler, it seems. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them might have travel trailers or of some kind behind their RV, but a lot of them have toy haulers. Now what's cool about them is that they have the part that is for living space, like a regular RV, and then they have the back part is where the, the toys go. In some of the models, they have a doorway, which divides the, the living area from the toy area, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just all open to each other. It just depends on the model. And some models, have a bed that's up against the ceiling that can come down and also they may have seats that uh, fold down and make into a bed so you have extra sleeping area in the back part when the toys are out now some people use toy haulers in a different way um, a lot of people that work on the road and they work remotely that's their office we know one couple that used that area for their children as a nursery type thing with um with their all their toys and everything so in that case i guess it was still used as a toy Sorry. hauler <laughs> but just smaller toys uh anyway so that's that's another thought uh when we first were looking for rvs we to we kind of um jokingly said we should get a toy hauler and put a few pews in the in the back and uh, a little pulpit but we never happened <laughs> <laughs> kind of along the line of a toy hauler you will sometimes see these uh, big long trailers with horses with their heads sticking out the windows or uh, maybe you'll see uh, like compartments for dogs like for show dogs or hunting dogs uh, there are travel trailers that have kind of the same concept where you have the RV part of it for the, the family, for the humans, and then the back part is what houses the animals, like horses or dogs or whatever. So that's kind of in that same line of thinking, but it's not considered a toy hauler. I'm not sure what it's called. I don't either. So if you know what their, those are called... Put it in the comments down below and let us all know. And the last one of what you would call a towable, and this one's kind of an interesting kind of towable because it tows in the back of your truck. It's called a truck camper. And it is the camper part of it slides into the truck bed. 
and then it's fastened in with different things and when you get into it it's not taking up much more room than the truck itself it usually has a part that will go up over the truck cab a little bit and then that's where you sleep is above up above that you don't have a lot of headroom when you sit up but you um, but you do have enough usually there's not a ton of storage in them you'll see a lot of them on the road but you won't find a lot of them in an rv dealership we uh did not see any when we went to all three yesterday we didn't see a single one some of them are very spacious and they have slide outs on them one time when we were making a, a stop i think it was at a gas station or something and we saw a huge truck camper on a huge truck you thought it was well the one-ton truck is a uh, ford would be an f 350 and i think this was an f 550 or bigger it I'm was not, it was a massive yeah. truck and the the camper that went into that truck bed was equally massive. You can generally park wherever you can park a truck at a pickup. And so that's the nice thing about them. Everything's on there. As far as wind goes, we've heard that sometimes they can feel a little tippy because they are just in the truck bed and that they can maybe catch the wind a little more. Um, but uh, a lot of people have them. You want to make sure you have the right truck for the size of the RV in its back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With all the towable options, the advantage in itself of, of having something that you tow behind you is that you have, say you need to get some something done on your truck or your van or your car, you can just take it in and get it taken care of. You don't have to give up your living space to do that. Um, so that's one of the advantages. You can unhook, leave it, your home, your RV, and you can go without it. That's one of the advantages. The disadvantage is that with these, all these units that we mentioned, you have to get out of your vehicle and go around and get into the RV through another door. If you were in a situation where you didn't feel safe and you wanted to get away from something quickly, you would have to get out of the RV and go to your truck or whatever and, and before you could drive away. Or you could just stay in there and send your husband out to do it. The last three that we're going to share with you all have motors in them, and that's why they're called motorhomes. The first one is a Class B. A Class B looks like a van, and they can go just about anywhere a van can go. They can park in a parking stall pretty much the way any other van can. Mm depending on the size of the Class B. Some are quite long, as the one we're showing right now. This one really has, um, I don't have any idea how long it was, but it was definitely one of the bigger ones. And some of them have a single bed in the back. Some of them have twin beds and then the bathroom in the back. They're all, all different kinds of configurations on them. Uh, we have friends that live full time in a class B and they have their bed in the back and they just uh, leave it down as a bed all the time. Otherwise they can have it like a dinette during the day and then they can fold it down as a bed at night. So there's that option. It's a little bit more maneuvering things around, I think, with a, with yeah. a van like that, but they can go just about anywhere just want to clarify that a class B van is not to be confused with if you lot, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos it's not to be confused with the ones that people buy a cargo van and then they build their own we'll talk more about that later in the bonus section next we're going to talk about the class C class C motorhome has the truck part 
and then it has the home part and it's all connected. So like with the class B van, you are open to the, your whole home uh, or the whole RV from, the, from where you're driving or riding. You can get up and you can not have to go outside to get into the rest of it. The part above the cab um, sometimes people use that as extra sleeping area. Sometimes it, they use it for storage. It just depends on the situation that they're in. Some don't have a bed. They're much shorter and they don't have a bed in the back. So that is their only bed is above the cab. And then fairly new to the class C's are the super C's. Hmm. These have a lot more power. They're a much larger truck base on them are oh, 550 yeah. they're, they're very big. very big yeah. and uh i guess it just gives you a lot more power if you have a super c or you know someone that does put your comment down below on the advantages of the super c um why you think people have them compared to just the regular 350 or whatever you probably have a lot more storage space and yes. things too in those so and lastly, we have the Class A motorhome, which a lot of people are very familiar with. You see a lot of them on the road. They look like a bus. Hmm. And some are absolutely huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh they, man, they are big. And then there are others that are smaller. They have quite a range, really with all of the RVs yeah. we've talked about. There's always a range. So... You just have to look at a lot of different styles and decide on the one that's best for you. But with the Class A, um, again, you will have an opening area from the cab part to the rest of the home. So you can get up and do whatever, like maybe fix a sandwich or something. You're, well, you're not supposed to do that while you're going down the road. Um, the class A, the floor level is the same from front to back on the inside. Also, the C class, you have to step up from the cab. You have to step up into the motorhome one step. So oh, that's, that's a, a good point. I forgot about yeah. that. We've seen some class A's that only have one door to go in or one <sighs> door to go out. Yeah. Other ones will have at least two doors, one on the passenger side by the uh, passenger seat. Uh, the other one be in the middle of it somewhere where you enter into the living room area. So the one that we looked at yesterday had um didn't only had the one door and it was kind of in the middle so that is that is one drawback on some of those maybe they'll have a built-in desk so some people can be doing their work while they're going down the road and or they could use it for a snacking on or like a table or extra table or something too but when you're are, parked there can nice. be a private desk or study area somewhat yeah not all class a's have that feature but this is the one that we saw yesterday that did the advantage of having a, a a class or c class as we mentioned before the big one is uh, security if you have to leave a place you don't have to get out of the vehicle and get into the vehicle, uh, get out of the RV and then into the vehicle to drive away. The challenge, of course, is uh, if you need repairs, you have to surrender your home and your vehicle <laughs> and find alternative transportation and you have to find a place to live till it's taken care of. A lot of people, they will have a small car or a pickup or something that they haul behind that RV and then they'll have at least extra transportation. Otherwise, if you go to an RV park and you don't have a towable and you want to go get groceries, you either have to do it before you go to that RV park and just stay put, or you're going to have to take the whole thing with you and uh, go do your errands or running or, or sightseeing or whatever, and then come back and park it all over again. Or you have to rent another vehicle while you're in that location. Yep. So, so those are all things to think about with, with a motor home. Now for the bonus section, this is going to be short, but we just wanted to not leave 
we didn't want to leave out some of these ideas as far as what some people use as an RV and they are not technically an RV that you buy this way. They're, they're things that people with very creative minds have made into an RV. One of them, like we mentioned before, are the cargo vans. You don't even need to have a cargo van. It can be just a regular minivan, whatever. It's a lot of people will find a way to just make a bed in it. They might have a small area for a cook stove and maybe a porta potty or something like that with them. All the way up to taking months uh, to do a van build where they include a shower and a toilet and um, have a little kitchen and everything. It is amazing what some people will do. The advantage of a class B is that it comes already done. The advantage to a van build is that you have a lot of different floor plan options and ideas and ways that you can use them. So a lot of people do it that way instead of buying the class B and it costs a lot less. Usually in most mm -hmm. cases, it costs a lot less than buying a class B van. Another thing we've seen is people take box trucks like, Oh, the kind that would deliver tools or a uh, bakery or uh, just different kinds of smaller trucks. It's called a box truck, and they have made those into uh, a small, livable space. And then there's people that have even bought old ambulances and made those into an RV. We've seen some that take old school buses. I guess our favorite would probably be the mid-size or shorter school bus. If that would be our preference, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we've seen the full size, and we've seen some that are very long that they've made into some really nice homes. There are some that are even as like an old Greyhound bus. Can you imagine oh, the yeah. storage those have on them? Mm -hmm. Basically anything you can imagine, if you can figure out a way to do it, uh, there's a lot of different mm -hmm. ways that people can make their own RVs out of something that wasn't intended <laughs> to be an RV. Again, we want to thank Ron Hoover RV of Katy, Texas for um, allowing us to go in and film. And they were very accommodating in addition yeah. to that, very friendly. And that was the second experience we've had with a Ron Hoover dealership. One, The other one was in Bernie, Texas. And uh, they only have seven in the whole state of Texas. But I think if we were to choose, we went to three of them yesterday and talked to different people. And if we had to choose, I think we'd start with Ron Hoover first. It's a little plug in there for them. We're not getting paid to say that. We just wanted to thank them for letting us do this, this uh, video. So which RV would you prefer? Remember to keep an open mind. There are pros and cons to every single RV on the planet. There's always going to be an issue of some sort with all of them. You just have to choose the one that's best fit for you. And it can always change. You can always sell it and get a different one if you don't like what you have. Uh, some people are on their fourth or fifth RVs in the time frame that we've lived in this one. So, And we weren't going to start out with this one at all. We were going to do the Class C. So leave your comments down below. Let us know what you would like. What do you own? Do you, do, are there things about your RV that you really, really like over other choices? Uh, leave your comments down below. If you don't know how to do that, it'll say comments down below this video. There may already be a comment there. Just click on that and you'll have an open space for, to write your comment. Check out our Facebook page, Roads of Faith, for extra features. Uh, sometimes I put recipes on there and uh, other places we've been, other things. We'll put some pictures of the cricket um, on our Facebook page so you can see that choice for an RV. That was impressive. Click on that red button down below that says subscribe. Next to a little bell going to pop up. Ring the bell and you'll be notified every time your videos come up. And until next time, God, God bless. bless.